When you hear the word culture, what comes up in your mind? In fractal, there is a lot of transparency. Like people will tell you upfront, like you don't make sense, or you make sense, or we'll consider it, or we won't consider it. For me, it's a lot about freedom, freedom to express yourself, freedom to be heard. And as freshers, a lot of times you tend to not be taken too seriously. It does not change, but I think it had a it had its own evolution through COVID. What are you missing working from home? That a lot of things you want to talk about culture can be seen in action. Yeah, when you're in, when you're together, yeah, and that together space that, is off. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's great. I, I work with the best people. It's just I've never seen them. I talk to a lot of people every day, but they never turn on the video. Do you feel that you can openly talk about mental health? Actually, like I think there is from experience, there's another side to it, which is when people take it too seriously. There has been certain certain cases where I've been told to be stoic enough. There is that secret sauce which is beyond your paycheck. Where is that secret sauce? Okay, why are we not able to take the workforce age more for them to still see a purpose to continue more? That is where the question and the answer both lies. Welcome to Fractal Unfiltered. This is the second episode of this series and uh, my name is Anish. So as always, there is no host, no panel or no audience uh, in this. Every one of us are participants, including me. Just think of me as your guiding participant. While well, I'll steer the ship, all of us are captains uh, you know, in this uh, particular show. Today, we are going to explore our culture. We are going to dissect uh, what is work from home, uh, the work from home hustle to the back to office grind, right? And also something in between which we call hybrid work now. Not only that, we will also discuss a little bit about how we work, why we work, and while doing all this, uh, how the heck we keep our sanity in check. Right? These are the things which we are going to uh, talk uh, about today. So buckle up and uh, get ready for Fractal Unfiltered and let's start the show. So I just wanted to, uh, some raise of hands, how many Imagineers are here in the group today? Uh, Imagineers, no matter, I mean you joined us Imagineer, you're an Imagineer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, this many. How many of you have been less than a year in Fractal? Okay. No, I so, okay. How many of you less than two years in Fractal? Five years. Okay. How many of you have then rest, I think, hopefully more than two years, right? Uh, more than two years is less. Okay, that's the crew. So, this question is particularly for Imagineers and people who are less than one year uh, at Fractal. Whoever, uh, you know, rose your hands, right? Keep your mics wherever uh, is ready. So, first question, I think, uh, oh no, this gang is all Imagineers gang, right? When you hear the word culture, you know, what comes up in your mind? Organizational culture, in that context, what comes into your mind? And how do you see that play in Fractal? Does it play in Fractal or does it not play in Fractal? For me, it's a lot about freedom. Freedom to express yourself, freedom to be heard. And as freshers, a lot of times you tend to not be taken too seriously. And I think that doesn't happen in Fractal. No matter who's on the call, be it the client partner, the engagement manager, if you make sense, if you have a point, people are going to listen to you. So that's mm -hmm. what matters to me and I think that's really there in Fractal. Okay, so for you, culture is freedom and you experience that, okay? Uh, I think for me, culture will always be about like relationships that you have with your people and your teams and between teams, right? So the differentiator will always be whether a company gives its teammates a lot of like importance, and responsibility regardless of like how long they've been here or what their experience level is and gives them a chance to kind of learn and grow over time and my experience has been great so far so for me culture is more about your uh, freedom and comfort so you talk to leadership and you feel always comfortable like they say don't don't worry we are there and any escalation you need not to worry so that kind of comfort i mean people like who are there less than a year and they'll ha always help you in any decision and th there is a team always so that's about culture for me it's comfort mm -hmm. and i mean uh, it's like you you talk to people and then you get a lot of support and uh, moreover you get a lot of opportunity as well it's sure. not about your project you meet with far team you meet with anyone they are ready to support you they they'll always uh, you know allow you to work with them so that's that's good thing about fractal sure. and i really like that awesome. i mean like this is my second thing at fractal so <laughs> i can say like probably uh, one thing which i feel the culture uh, 
which I, which I have seen over the years, right? Is like everyone is really really approachable, and uh, you know you can actually go to anyone and talk to anyone, and I mean, it's not like you know some people only talk to themselves. I mean the floor is open, so I think when one of the points which was said earlier, right? You coming to office, this is one big motivation. You can talk to anyone and everyone, right? And there's so many opportunities which which uh, he also highlighted. So I think for in one word I can say like the approachable nature and the uh, the the values are also shown in people, right? In in Fractalite. So that's like something which is really unique. About the culture, the one thing that I liked the most, and I was a little bit skeptical because I was just starting. I didn't uh, we like what we heard from our seniors in college that in corporate you have to like put up a lot of defenses. You always have to think before speaking. But in fractal, there is a lot of transparency. Like people will tell you upfront, like you don't make sense, or you make sense, or we'll consider it, or we won't consider it. So it helps a lot uh, in your own journey as well, and as well as the team, because you know what's happening in the next step. And even the leadership will uh, like even Shrikant has that uh, the generative way I call where he tells like and even town halls key what's going to happen and what's fractal is thinking even at that level you are aware how the company is moving so that's yeah awesome awesome just a twist to this question for the people who have been more than two years uh, at fractal right you've seen the culture a lot and and at some point it is a difficult culture some point it's a different culture for you. Tell us some experience where you thought the culture is becoming difficult. I think um, <clears throat> sometimes uh, culture overtakes processes, uh, systems, and uh, as a scale as an organization, uh, the systems and processes becomes more important. Uh, I'm not saying it's more important than culture. I'm only saying it shouldn't come in the way. Uh, I think sometimes that happens. and. Uh, as an organization, obviously, we give preference to culture when that conflict arises. Uh, and that's where a lot of problems come in. And as we are growing as an organization, obviously, new people are coming in. There are new ways of doing things. Um, whether it is better, not better, it's a debatable topic. But since there are so many new people now in the organization, no more a 700 people organization. Uh, so scale brings in that complexity. And culture sometimes comes in the way. And as an organization, our preference is always to give importance to culture. Absolutely. That's where it becomes complex. <laughs> Maybe I'll quickly add to that, right? As I, as I think about it and also think back to the time that, that I have uh, spent with the organization, uh, as you think about culture, a key part for me as I came in was autonomy. And that is something that I hear in the, in the room as well, right? People are talking about the freedom that they get in doing things. What gets missed out, and that I think is what Bharat also was probably referring to, is the fact that any autonomy always comes with accountability. And those two need to go hand in hand, otherwise things will go out of uh, control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, to keep moving forward, you need that right balance, which I'm not sure if we always get that. And, and again, this whole hybrid work also maybe sometimes plays into that, that whole uh, aspect there. Awesome, awesome. And I think the um, <coughs> you know one of the aspects that you know we should also keep in mind is that um, culture there is going to be a metamorphosis of culture as well. You know, you s it's not something which is cast in stone. Absolutely. You know, for every organization, you start as a starting point, and it'll as you scale, as you you know you know take more talent in, it is going to you know take shape. It is it is not something which is going to be static. It is going to be you know quite dynamic. I think that openness to that dynamic. Uh, nature of culture, uh, your processes, your systems, your way of doing delivery, your engagements, everything, nothing is constant. So Absolutely. your nimbleness, your agility to adopt newer ways, uh, understand and look at that additional perspective, I think that's what, um, you know, you know, matters. And the other part is since you asked that the first, you know, instance, personally for me, culture is uh, an amalgamation of many things. It is about how I interact with my colleague, how I interact with my leader, um, how do I give feedback to my, you know, you know, team members, mm -hmm. you know, the way, just the way we do things, that is a big part of that culture and that is very distinct and unique in every organization and Fractal is no different. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Yeah, I think uh, I'd like to add a couple of points here. Uh, so, so uh, when I started Fractal, it was a much smaller close sort of group of people, right? And and generally very close group and very well trusted as well. But over the last five years, we've started hiring a lot of folks. There's a lot of remote hiring that has happened as well. 
But the one thing that has not changed is the way in which that, uh, that sort of uh, trust and also that uh, relationship building happened remotely and happened so quietly that uh, it has not changed, but I think it had, a, it had its own evolution through COVID. And, uh, and I think with the Imagineers coming in, I think there's a lot more fun, I would say, that is built into the system. So maybe five years back, we were not doing a lot of fun <laughs> activities. Uh, but, uh, but we see, we do a lot more fun events. We actually go out sure. with the teams a lot. So <coughs> it's actually moving in the positive direction. I completely agree with what you guys mentioned. Uh, you need your freedom, you need your flexibility so that, uh, so that you feel responsible and accountable for your role. But at the same time, as we scale, it also has to be governed in the right way so that, uh, so that we actually move forward in the right direction. Sure, sure, sir. Yeah, so in my <coughs> opinion, I think culture should evolve as the organization scale uh, because we can, should not use the culture definition um, as an impediment for growth. Mm -hmm. Right, that we should use, we should see how culture can enable us to grow bigger and it, there are certain things which are values, which are a part of the DNA, which are sacrosanct and we should not, for example, extend extreme trust. We have to do that whether you are a 500 uh, people company or a 5000 people company, but mm -hmm. the context and how you do it might differ from, uh, from there to there. So we should be aware of that and then uh, keep the values intact but see how to evolve it and how to apply it uh, in the, uh, to the larger organization. So it's, it's very important as many of uh, uh, you also said, right? the culture will evolve. Culture. culture is not written in stone, but there is some core uh, you know, identity of a culture, one of which is our values. right? So we have four values. You know, I'll just name those four values to all of you. The first value is client first. Uh, right? That's, that's kind of a sacrosanct value uh, that we have. You can see our NPS and everything, right? That basically talks about our uh, client first value. Number two is learn and grow. For the kind of field we are in, the half cycle of kind of technologies nowadays like four weeks, <laughs> right? So you have to learn and grow. So that's, that's number two value. Number three is think big and act fast, right? Again, we are in a, a generation where we have to think big and act fast to be ahead uh, in the industry and be hired to help our clients move forward also. And last but not the least is uh, extend extreme trust and be accountable. So these are the four values we have. The question, this is for all of you, whoever wants to start first can go, is in these four values, which of the values you identify most with? And have you seen that happening in culture or have, a, you have not seen that happening in culture? Whichever way, right? Both, you can argue in both sides. So the uh, last one that you talked about, uh, extending extreme, extreme trust and uh, being accountable. So. I think that is in action almost every day and uh, uh, part of the reason that uh, I feel we as an organization and you know this team is thriving is also because of that. So our leaders give us that freedom and uh, you know the way we operate daily uh, you know we have so everyone talked about uh, you know, what does it come to mind and they talked about freedom so that comes in uh, as part of this where we trust our people to do the right thing to put the client first and you know for them to learn and grow, to meet up to the challenges and etc. So I think this trust is the foundation of one means other values are happening. And I've been uh, personally benefited because, you know, once you have the right leader who gives you this trust, uh, the team really blossoms. So awesome. Uh, so I'd say for me, it's always been learn and grow because I feel like I get to learn something new here every day. And there's a lot of opportunities to learn, right? We have resources, we have time, we have things that are organized by the employees themselves. And I can say confidently that everything I do today, I had no clue about when I joined. And so it's been a very big kind of steep learning curve for me, but it's always been fun. So that. Uh, so on the think big, act fast, right? Uh, I mean, I think uh, that's one thing which when we are talking to clients, right? I have, I've seen our leadership always think about the bigger picture, right? And that's something which we, as when we are working on a day-to-day -day basis with our clients, we t sometimes tend to miss on that, right? We, we just focus on the current problem or on the current use case which you're solving, but we don't think strategic, right? And that's how we can actually grow our relationship. And, you know, that value comes into picture over there, you know, thinking big about how we can make our clients succeed better and then acting fast on it, right? So that's one thing which I feel uh, we kind of, you know, I see it sometimes happening on a day-to-day -day basis also and mm -hmm, also mm -hmm. on a regular basis. So, yeah. 
Awesome. I think for me also, learn and grow is the most important. So coming directly from, like I just graduated from college this year, we, we didn't have any corporate experience. The training that we've had here has been very significant, uh, not just the in, like in the tech part, but we also had this corporate training as well. So I think that has helped a lot. And in, like I, I believe that we need to be aware of what's happening in the industry mm -hmm. and what tools mm -hmm. and technologies are coming in. And we need to continuously learn I think learn and grow for me. Sure. I'll maybe quickly add Anish to that, right? Uh, the last remaining value, uh, just to cover that, right? Client first. Uh, and, and I've seen that from day one once I've joined. Uh, I've seen it going to levels where it is almost like client obsession. We will do almost mm -hmm. anything to make sure that the client is successful. Mm -hmm. Many a times that means we go out of our way to do things which we might not have agreed to in the beginning. But the outcome is what is important for us and, and I see all of us, I think, living that every day. Awesome. I think I agree with that. Having moved from the client side to Fractal, <laughs> I think I was... By the way, Dinesh was our client. He was our client and from client he moved to. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, Fractal stood out very well, right? I mean, uh, the amount of, I would say, effort that they would put in uh, to actually uh, commit to whatever has been promised, uh, I mean, they'll go... I'm talking as a client now, sorry. <laughs> but uh, Fractal used to sort of uh, deliver that, right? Uh, that promise uh, and uh, and I think the partners, the leaders were always a phone call away. I remember three or four times Pranay would fly in from the US just to meet us and ensure that uh, whatever has been promised will be delivered, right? And uh, that was the level of commitment that we saw when we were a client. And I think that was also something that actually really inspired me to move and join Fractal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think uh, now when we speak to our clients uh, I want to make sure that I also deliver the same <laughs> level of commitment so uh, so definitely uh, when we talk about NPS and how it gets reported and how proud we are uh, it really shows that uh, that value and how we live that value day in and day out. Right. you wanted that? Yeah I think for me all four values are like written and then put in a puzzle. Uh, think big and act fast is something I, I literally feel every day. Uh, what happens is uh, there are times when you think big mm -hmm. and immediately somebody says, so what's going to happen next tomorrow, right? And there are times you're internalizing and saying, okay, I want to do something, act fast. And one stops and says, did you think big? Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel that that complementary nature comes in every day. Uh, and then it internalizes to both of us and you realize, oh my God, there's only so much I have done. Oh, so sure. that's my most favorite and it helps me grow better. So in, in, the, in my duration, in the three years, I think I've seen all the four values go hand in hand in the different projects. So starting with trust and accountability, the fact that your managers have enough trust in you to give you projects and make sure that you work. And in, particularly in my case, I've seen that each project I've learned something new each day. So mm -hmm. and the way that I've learned it, it's not like, oh, I have to do it. I'm like very happy when I'm learning it. So that's credit to my team and managers because they have made learning fun, they have put that trust and they make sure, I don't know, by default, if I have done some mistake, I somehow tend to take accountability for that. And client first, oh my god, they are like too into it. So there have been days where we have promised something and due to any issue that's not done, we just make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. We make it happen some or the other way. So that's something that they have taught me very well. And act fast, oh my god, in this recent project, every day it's like there's something coming up, you need to think and act immediately because if your client is impacted hugely. So I think all the sure, four things sure. go hand in hand. Awesome. Abhishek. Sure. So I, uh, I mean, some of you know, I recently joined Fractal. Uh, the first thing that I noticed about the values were that they were very actionable and very clear. Most of the organizations have a vague set of values which at times people don't stand by, right? But what we realized by 2016 or even before that was that these values were all defined as abstract nouns. And what we realized was that abstract nouns are abstract and hard to follow. And you don't think of examples very quickly. So let's get rid of those values. And then let's create simple, actionable verbs in that anybody can understand. Fractal values are extremely clear. There's a lot of clarity in those values. That's number one. Number two, uh, as she mentioned, the values are connected and correlated. If you think about it, right? Think big, act fast. 
um, respect uh, is, is and then learn and grow, right? Uh, is very much correlated to the client first and client obsessed approach uh, that most of the fractalized take. And third thing which I observed uh, in, my, in my limited data set in the last six months is uh, that fractalites actually live by that value. And when I speak to uh, you know, fractalites at every level, uh, there is that client first attitude. People, you know, stay back till late. Uh, you know, people stay back late and attend client calls. Um, people at times even uh, adjust to the schedules of the client. Right? Um, there's a there's a library in every fractal office that I have visited. Learn and grow is actually practiced in mm -hmm. fractal. Right? Uh, the mutual respect. And I think you know when I was uh, when I was interviewing. Um, with the leaders over here, uh, I felt that the discussions were very respectful. And that's what really kind of uh, convinced me that this is the organization to join as well. Uh, so yeah, that's been my observation based on the limited data set that I've Sure, 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 sure. So one, one, just another uh, variation of this question. Of, we spoke about what is good in this value, how it is connecting us, how we are delivering and everything. Have you faced anything adverse because of these values? Because of client first, okay, I'm facing this problem. Because of, uh, you know, think big at first, I'm facing this problem. Any problems or anything on that aspect? One thing that I saw it sometimes, if there's an escalation or something, like because it's the client first attitude, you go above and beyond. You end up working late nights, early mornings. That has happened. Sometimes it takes a toll on your your personal, so personal life, yeah. Okay, okay, uh, yeah. okay. To add on to that, the client first part, it has to made us do like a lot of iterations of, even the client would start on one thing and then they would like, you know, now this sounds better, so you should do that. <laughs> and then we start all, all over. And nobody even says anything. Nobody refutes it. No, we are just, yeah, we will just do it. And in the same timeline, we deliver it. So I have done it, I have seen it happen, and yeah, that and adapted to it. Sure, sure. So I think they are confused. So <laughs> to keep client first or to do the things on time. So this this is why this happens mostly. But yes, this happens. Sure. So I want to add, uh, there are two things, client first and uh, think big, act first. So when we think big and act first, clients expressing, <laughs> clients can express and grow up a uh, number of times. And they think, this is possible, this is possible, this is possible. <laughs> so that when the work is about one report or two reports, it grows up to five reports and we have to cluster it down. Then we have to prioritize ourselves. So sometimes this can be a ba back, uh, throwback on us, but again, but this it's is what... Good, it's, it's good for client at the end of the day, but it more work for you. Yeah. That's the, okay, okay. So again, it depends. So uh, I mean, client first, the negative part of client first, I mean, that is, if you have a new account, then we are a bit reluctant to say we cannot do that. But once we are in that account for a long time, we, I mean, if we say, no, this can't be doable, they will agree. That is a problem. So, I mean, it's not a problem. That is, that's a fact. You go everywhere. Sure, sure, it's a, sure. You have to build the relationship. Yeah, you have to build okay. the relationship and then they will trust. Yeah, whatever you are saying, that's fine. But at new account, it, it varies. So sure, it's very sure, difficult. Sure. I mean, I have faced that, but I, I don't have complaint. I know that it's a... I mean, it's a real-time scenario. It can happen sure, for new accounts. Sure, sure, sure. I think it also links to the the last one, right? The extreme, extend extreme trust. Yes, yes. So you also try to actually do that with the client because yes. we extend our trust, we invest, and we sort of continue to build that relationship. Yes. But everything has its own sort of, uh, <coughs> I would say, gray lines or borders, yes, right? Yes. Because uh, yeah. it should not get to a point where uh, where somebody is actually uh, sort of trying to get everything out of you right yeah, <laughs> so so i think as uh, yeah, as leaderships or as people who are responsible for managing those relationships uh, we try to balance that because yes, yes. Uh, because client first is is probably the right way to go ahead but uh, also making sure that it's built on trust and it's also built on respect so i think she was mentioning about defense mechanisms yes. when you start working with somebody new Everybody has their own defense mechanisms and trust does not come naturally. Yes. It takes time to build that up. Once it is there, then of course, it, it kind of plays its natural course. After yes. that. So I've actually experienced firsthand in a client project where the extreme levels of obsession, right? Uh, you always want uh, what is right for the client. 
Now, it's not easy to communicate, and being authentic is one way, right? Uh, at times, you're not able to help them visualize that. So then there's a conflict between what you think is right and what the client is like, I know what you're saying, but tomorrow I need something else, right? <laughs> and you know, if you were to accept that, then you're going to put the client on a trap. So that conflict that you have between what you think you realize is right, and then that is uh, something that a is downside. Something. Okay. It's very okay. difficult to explain that because there's so much of uh, ownership that you carry. With sure. you. Learning in general is a word that has a very positive connotation. So for me, I believe, of course, like learning is a great thing. But the industry that we are in, like AI consulting, consulting itself is tough and building products or building solutions on top of AI, which is ever evolving. So one of the things like when generative AI came in, chat GPT came in and now every client wants an enterprise level chat GPT. Everybody <laughs> wants something that is so intelligent and you are the one who has to deliver it. So in a way you, you are keen to learn, but the way you have to learn and how quickly you're supposed to learn becomes really unrealistic at times. So that becomes an impediment. So you enjoy learning, but the pace of it becomes unrealistic. <laughs> so that's a good point. I would like to add a couple of points. So. I've seen uh, sometimes we misinterpret like what is client first approach. It doesn't mean like what client is expecting provide everything. It's more about understanding their needs and what, what will be the valuable information or how we can solve the problem as a team. So that understanding their problem and understanding all the needs and how we can help them, that will be, I mean, most customer sure, obsessions sure, approach or client sure. first approach, I would say. So that's how I look at it. I think that those are very important points. So, so we wanted to tackle both aspects, right? There's not roses also has thorns, right? So it's it's like it's it's just both the angles. So we want to discuss both the angles. But this is for the the relatively new joiners, right? We I'm very curious. So I wanted to ask, you know, imagine years and you know, less than two years, right? So while you are, let's assume. Uh, you know, job hunting, when you scroll some LinkedIn or whatever, right? Okay, like, what do you look at? Do you look at what is the role, how much compensation they will give, or uh, do you stalk them in LinkedIn, Glassdoor, uh, Insta, and see how their culture is? What, what is it? So, I usually go to LinkedIn and I check. And I mean, in the current scenario, if you go and search, I mean, if I want to join Fractal, Obviously, through LinkedIn, I can get connect and I can talk to people who are working in Fractal. By default, I'll get one or two people who who will be working in Fractal with the network. Ah, okay, okay. So that is, the, I mean, that's the advantage of LinkedIn. You go and you talk to people. The moment you talk to people, obviously, if you are, you, if your name is not good, you will always, uh, you know, get some impression. But if you talk to people, they'll say, okay, culture is very good, and you know, and I'm staying. I mean, and they're in fractal from last eight years, and then I met another person who stayed fractal two years, and then obviously you go to you know the other uh, networking side, and you get those information. Sure, but sure, LinkedIn sure. is the prime one, and you get many information. <coughs> uh, I want to add an interesting point here. So back in college, I was in the placement cell, and something that our seniors used to constantly tell us: if you want a technical job. Coding is all you need. And there was one caveat to it. So they would always say that there's only one company that hires for a technical role, but a lot of people get rejected in the HR rounds, and that is Fractal. <laughs> and that's actually what happened with some of my batchmates. Like most of the people were so confident that we've cleared all the technical rounds now. It's just HR round, you know, just a mere formality. And almost half the people could not clear the HR round because they were looking for a cultural fitment. Good, good. So this is this is one question. Uh, uh, to all the new folks who have entered the workflows, right? You guys have entered the workflows relatively new uh, to us and everything. So what do you, I think the current word they are using uh, in the world is Gen Z. I think that's what they are using. I don't know. We don't use those kind of labels, but that's what they use. <laughs> so so what does what does this generation look for in a company uh, and in your career, right? What do you look for in a company and in a career? I think initially you're greedy for money, so compensation <laughs> for sure. Uh, learning opportunities, growth opportunities, and visibility. You don't get a lot of visibility when you're starting out in your career, but I think a lot of ambitious people want visibility right from the first step, the moment they step in the company. So maybe these factors for me. B when you say visibility, what is it? Like uh, in our company, like you can speak to anybody over here, right? Like Shrikant is so available in the town halls. All the client partners are just roaming around in office and we bump into them. <laughs> 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 like I literally remember, 
I remember asking Bhaskar almost like a colleague, what do you do? Which team do you work in? <laughs> and somebody like literally just pointed me like, he's a client partner. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of an approachability and visibility is what I was referring to. Sure, sure. <laughs> So I, I think uh, like Nihal mentioned, uh, a lot of us do a lot of like stalking on Glassdoor and LinkedIn and then you put the name in Google and you go to Google News and you say, <laughs> oh, Unicorn and this, that. You get a lot of like information when you just start out, right? But I think eventually what it boils down to for me is one very rational and one very irrational thing. Uh, number one is you kind of want to see the employee sentiment. So LinkedIn and Glassdoor, you'll have a lot of people like expressing sentiments, right? Be it anonymously or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of gather what kind of company it is from that. Right? So you see people speaking highly of their manager or saying that we feel like the CEO is a visionary. It, it gives you some amount of faith right, in the company. And the irrational one that I always look at is the company's website. Mm -hmm. So a lot of older school companies, they tend to keep their websites the same for many, many years. And that kind of shows that they don't fully understand how quickly they need to evolve with the times. So I think a website is a really good litmus test of whether a company That's is going to join or not. Awesome. The looks and yeah. the content. Just everything. Content. Okay. 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 So, talking to a bunch of Imagineers and something interesting that I heard. Uh, so one of them said that uh, they were looking for a company which is Instagram worthy. Oh. <laughs> what is that? I, 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 I'm not a Gen Z. Instagram sorry. is a photo app, right? Yeah, it means the pictures look nice. Ah, it? okay. Yeah, basically. You can and you have more things to show off about. So is yeah. fractal Instagram worthy? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is 75% there right now. It's 75% there. Yeah. I think the you guys have to take it to 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, uh, only about that Instagram only. They had the Halloween celebration, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. I, I, uh, they had those uh, Halloween cupcakes That's decorated awesome. with that uh, whole theme. So yeah, I posted that. It got a lot of likes. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> okay, so I so. think that's there. Like, the for freshers, when we go to... Any co uh, like if I am joining Fractal, my friend is joining, let's say, another company. So each one has to be like, oh, my company, mein I get this. What do you get? What do you ah. get? So that the, wow. the more you can show off, the more. The benefits, goodies, you are, everything. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Since you mentioned Gen Z, um, I think one of the things that you should also keep in mind is that the um, choices that each generation makes, um, it's heavily influenced by the uh, situation at that point in time um, you know for example the current generation would want to basically experience the differentiation in each company uh, because there are that many more opportunities because of globalization you, you always need to keep in mind is that the prism through which each workforce or each generation Look. is looking through the job as a important aspect of their life it is constantly evolving and that is that much more important for the company at play to also evolve to say that this is the next part of the workforce. Like my daughter would know more about mobile than probably from my spouse. She at the age of six because she started at the iPhone. <laughs> vis -a -vis maybe our time. So that is the lens yeah. that to which the company needs to be on the other side of the lens to understand how do we evolve because Absolutely. the generation mm -hmm. is going to keep evolving at the end yeah. of the day. We started with what? Nokia 3310. <laughs> <laughs> we started with that. <laughs> I have With like one more serious point uh, sure. on that. Uh, so uh, like when I was looking for different companies when I was in college, so the one main thing was the impact of the work that I was doing. Like what impact will it create? Because in a lot of like very, very big companies, you will go months on months on one project and you don't even know where that uh, is being used. Because I had some friends in like seniors, they said like some internal tool they were working on and it got scrapped after a year and that happens a lot in big companies so and yeah. uh, here it's like from even with my shadow project I was given like equal division of work and I was like interacting I was going in the client calls I had things to say I had things to contribute so yeah uh, that is a uh, one major point uh, as an observation and few of them are here who I work with uh, whatever got one here into the organization right those could be like some ignition or some <coughs> triggers but what I find keeps them here every day they are judging is the quality of problem you're giving. I feel that that judging is so continuous in a learning organization like us, uh, which is what is keeping that energy going. So sure, I could have sure. taken a decision to come in because of a certain spurt of a, a trigger of something that I saw, but every day someone who's new is judging us. Uh, and that's the only thing which is I think common across all generations that is a problem big enough for me to be really relevant uh, and be part of it. <laughs> 
sometimes i am interested in ai sometimes data science sometimes i also want to explore consulting or the behavioral science so i think uh, what i like about fractal is that it gives us the flexibility to switch between teams and roles mm -hmm. so i think that's what i really like about fractal okay 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 yeah. cool cool and that's a part of a people principles as well mobility ah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely what is the biggest win of working from home is it like pajamas all days or non shower or whatever right what are you guys uh, and what are you missing working from home so what is the biggest win of working from home and what are you missing uh, on working from home who wants to start i'll go how ah, you go first okay the biggest win i would say is again flexibility so let's say i have a meeting at 9 if i have to come to office and take the meeting i'll have to leave at 8 bangalore traffic but if i have a meeting at 9 i can get up at 8:55 and still take the <laughs> meeting so that's like a win for me and what is something that i miss out is um, i think that social connect and my friends mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. fractal i don't know you, uh, people usually tell that you should never make friends in corporate but i made the best i met the best people and i made the best friends in corporate so that's something that i miss out sometimes i come to office only to meet them because you need that social i don't absolutely, know absolutely bond yeah at home you get bored after yeah, yeah. someone you, you were saying about friends. i think i fully agree with her on that mm. and in fact see, i prefer to work from the office i tend to come in maybe four or five days a week if i can uh one obvious positive is that every now and then if you want to just get a change of scenario you can go somewhere else work from your parents house work from a friend's house there's always that but i think one of the biggest drawbacks of actually uh working from home is that um like for example my entire team works out of bombay right and that is something that you only see in an environment that is largely remote or largely hybrid right where you'll have a lot of these intercity or interstate teams and people are expected to collaborate now it's great i i work with the best people it's just i've never seen them <laughs> right but i'm sure they're lovely and i'd like to meet them but that's kind of this one trade off that you'll always have with hybrid work and uh, it is yeah so like as uh, to tell to know about the flexibility uh, work from office gives you like it sometimes i feel it sometimes uh, doesn't allow you the space to grow apart from the job so sometimes some people are taking up a gym some people are taking up some sports or something or just they are following something apart from the work so work from home gives us that extra space where you can be uh, just uh, log off your work of your work table just transfer there by a switch and get back to your life so that is something i miss about work from home mm -hmm. but then there is this uh, thing about fractal basically where you make family like or um, like friends like uh, connections so you miss them also so it's like hybrid is the best for <laughs> <laughs> and also bangalore traffic is something that is uh, yeah bangalore <laughs> traffic bangalore <traffic. laughs> that that is sure, a sure. big role in work from home it or work from, from office oh, okay traffic and good. dust traffic and dust okay so 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 good good cool so so the same question for uh, the much more experienced tenured <laughs> track lights here so what we hear is uh, 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 now as the hybrid work is going on some people are working remotely fully some people are working in office completely uh, some people are like the so called hybrid right uh, the thing which we are hearing now is there are we are starting to see some inequalities uh, let it be opportunities let it be growth let it be learning uh, because maybe people say in office you get tacit knowledge in home you don't get it uh, right in home you get flexibility but in office uh, to a level you don't get it right so what do what do you guys think is the is the inequ inequality is real if it is real what are we doing to address it i can go first yeah. <coughs> so yeah i think there is because there's a lot of things what to learn by osmosis by just coming into office you sit next to each other um, you hear somebody talk having a conversation you observe so there are a lot of informal ways of learning and if you're managing a team and have a large team um, having distributed is fine but not having them in one place sometimes hurts mm -hmm. um, because you cannot build those personal connections uh, work becomes and everything becomes very formal and it's just about work all the time uh, not talking on teams um so i do think that uh, hybrid is better at least you can get to meet people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah learning it impacts learning and secondly it impacts uh, building the culture building the bond building the team spirit 
sure, uh, right? Sure. Uh, because everyone just gets into their own work and the tendency to help each other out, back each other up uh, is less. Um, so I do think that a lot of things what you talk about culture can be seen in action uh, when, you're in, when you're together. Together. Yeah. And that together space and that, is off. Yeah, also. otherwise you just talk about it, uh, but there's no action. And uh, when people see it in action, then they learn better. They just learn. It's not just the manager's responsibility to sure, talk sure, about it. Sure, they see sure. other people living the culture. So those are some of the, I think, the pitfalls of uh, not mm -hmm, being to working mm -hmm, together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any stuck in your characters you have gone through? I think, um, you know, from my vantage point, I think striking the right balance is very important. Yeah. Uh, it's a choice at the end of the day. Um, whether it is wrong or right is from the perspective of the individual. You know, I am sitting this side of the table, so your nine uh, may seem like a six of mine, and my six looks like a nine to you. So I think it's a, in a matter of perspective, but striking the right balance is very important. Uh, I personally believe that you know some of the best relationships tend to get forged at office. That water cooler discussion, that coffee discussion. Sometimes you you know having a very very um, heated argument with a colleague or a stakeholder. Uh, tends to get diffused over a cup of coffee where you know, both adults sit together and understand each other's perspective. Sometimes the virtual aspect tends to create those you know, small little Sometimes. barriers. Uh, and m most importantly, um, when you're, you know, there are some aspects of your, uh, I mean, everybody would love to be just an individual contributor till an innovator to the rest of your life. But in the kind of work that we do, which is very service oriented, you will deal with people. You will have teams who will look up to you. So there is that, you know, there are some skill sets that you will need to pick up, mm -hmm. you know, in this world, vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you, know, you know, especially where hybrid is here to stay, it's not going away. So now whether it is two days a week or one day a week, you figure out what works for you, but you ought to pick up those skills and that you can pick up only in, in, the, in, in the office environment. So those yeah. who are completely working remote, Will um, miss they out. Won't. Yes, yes, they will. Okay. So yeah. I mean, I can very honestly say some of my best friends in corporate life are actually, you know, some of my best friends are actually from corporate life of last 17, 20 years. Yeah. So it's and like that. Just adding to that, right? Uh, maybe building on that a little bit. Some of my best friends, for example, are those that I have never worked with. They have been there in the office, but given the fact that I like to stay active, I have played cricket with them, badminton with them, table tennis with them, or something else. And those friendships build over time. Now, what that enables me to then do is kind of sometimes also overcome that inequity in resources that you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because given that you know that person, you start interacting with them more, you know more about what's happening around you rather than only being centered around the work that you are doing yourself. It, I feel it makes you much more rounded and much more confident with what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Just to add, right, uh, like while, like like hybrid, like you said, right, you're making peace with something that hybrid could be the way. But what I've observed, I've worked in many organizations and at Fractal, I think whether you're working from home or working remotely from Australia or working from office, uh, you end up meeting people who are working from their heart and mind. There's so much of passion, so much of mathematical computation going in the brain. When they get stuck, if you're remote, it's so difficult to pull them back to the mm, system. Mm. So the whole social fabric that, you know, hey, come over, man, let's have a cup of coffee and then let's discuss, may give a eureka moment and may break you from that, that pain that you're holding. And that's been the problem I have faced managing teams the last six, eight months. Mm -hmm, that they're mm -hmm. so deeply engrossed that when they cut off, it's so difficult to figure out. Otherwise, in the office, you can say, just go talk to her man. I think she's trying to find the solution and not getting a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. So that work from heart and mind is what I see uh, sure, sure, is, sure. Is, 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 is what is helpful when you are in a place where you have more people. <clears throat> I have a slightly different perspective. Um, I think uh, what you get and what you don't get is also from whose perspective you are looking at. Right? Um, there have been instances, my own personal experience for example, as a manager, uh, you know, I have had instances where people are worried about what's happening at home while being in office. Uh, I'm staying away from my child, I'm staying, my pet is sick, not able to take care of it, not able to give time to my family, I go home only by 11 o'clock in the night. Now that problem is taken away. So some bit of mind space of managing that is cleared for me as a manager. 
right? I, I know this person is now in a safe space, working at home with the family, etc. So that whole debate that we used to have earlier of work-life balance, is to an extent taken care of. And therefore, as a manager, it gives me that mind space. I, I exactly know what is happening in their houses today. Um, obviously, yes, it makes me take that additional effort of reaching out to people, uh, finding out what is happening in their life, um, you know, reaching out to people to find out what's happening in office when I wasn't there. But it also gave me that advantage of managing the team better. I think I agree with uh, Bharat, right? So, uh, so we talked about inequalities, right? Uh, so, what has changed in the last two or three years is uh, work from home works. I mean, productivity as everybody thought will not drop and it people started working and we started adapting a new way of working. And I think somewhere it also opens up opportunities for those who, who cannot come into work, right? Uh, for instance, uh, we've had uh, women who had kids and getting back into office on a daily basis, managing a, a smaller or a younger child is a challenge, right? Uh, or somebody uh, who needs to be with their parents and looking after their elder parents in a remote village uh, they may not have, uh, like Bharat mentioned, uh, the mind space and also the physical presence that they can actually come in and do it. I think as Fractal, we've done our best, at least during COVID, to make sure that we sort of uh, fill those gaps on those inequalities. But I think going forward, uh, I strongly feel that, that we as an organization should strike that right balance so that uh, we take people's personal uh, sort of situations into consideration and uh, and at the same time give them the right opportunities. I mean it is difficult because uh, the more you know somebody the the obvious advantage they have but I think uh, somewhere we'll also have to ensure that uh, those working remotely who may not have social interactions with uh, with say rest of the organizations actually are not losing out right so it is yeah. up to fractal the leaders and the people here to also make sure that we are a bit more inclusive mm -hmm. because not everybody's situation is the same and i think uh, what happened in the last two three years actually showed that we can be better at it we can manage it better and i think that gives the right work-life balance for a lot of folks so sure. Oh. So the side anyone wants to go? So uh, there are two perspectives I see, like one is from the organization and from uh, one is from the individual, right? So uh, why, like, you know, we should be there in the office, like, should it be compulsory, should it not be compulsory? So there was a time, like, before COVID, uh, when I used to, like, you know, go regularly to offices and uh, uh, it was uh, such, a, such a thing that, like, I was so used to it that during COVID, like, the very idea of not stepping out of house was uncomfortable for me right mm -hmm. so actually i wanted to be physically at a place right so initially it was difficult but uh, eventually like you know over a period of time like uh, things got settled down like you know you s you you settled down in your routines right so it keeps Absolutely. on changing so that's how it changed ch changed for me actually uh, now the way i see here is like uh, so if you talk about connect like of course like there is nothing uh, equivalent to being physically present and talking to somebody but right now also like you know when I'm actually talking to somebody uh, over a call right uh, even a very small thing like you know turning on the video right that also makes such a lot of difference because uh, during our connect like in my previous organization I, I worked there for like w more than one year and mm -hmm. uh, I talked to a lot of people every day but they never turn on the video right <laughs> that was only in the last day that i got to see them so that is where i felt like oh like i don't even have a connect with them <laughs> okay so so when i came to fractal like you know th this culture was there like you know you can you should always like i mean you should not always but the culture of like you know always turning on your video you know you can see the person smile laugh and you can feel that kind of connectivity so in a way i'll still say like work from home can still uh, work in a way, like, you know, you can still make it work by mm -hmm. connecting to people like over video calls also, yeah. So, my thoughts on that again is, you know, as a progressive organization, we need to take care of the needs of all the types of people, their life situations. So, it may not be a one size fits all. Sure, sure. So, there may be people who may want to come to office and work better, whereas some people, as described by other others now, mm -hmm. want to be at home. But that doesn't mean they should miss out on those opportunities for learning or bonding or whatever it is. So, 
how do we enable that i think that is something what we should think sure, how do sure. we enable opportunities for them as well awesome awesome yeah you want a few points uh, i would say that work from home versus hybrid versus work from office it has certain pros and cons based on the context but the biggest difference i would say the communications you know as per the you know data i have seen that people are saying that we are not feeling connected when you are working from home mm -hmm. specifically you are newbies or you are joining you know the company and you are you have never been interacted with that person previously so imagine the current situation i am just interacting with certain you know system and certain icon i don't know the person how they you know how they talk and what their personality and that is very crucial for a teamwork and i do understand i'm not blaming anybody because i do understand we started you know adapting the new culture and there is lot of opportunity to evolve the system i mean the work from home things uh, i see that's totally you know uh, there is lot of way to improve the design i mean the way we interact in person right we have to see the person you know how i express myself what is the emotion of the person but through work from home you don't have the leisure to see the person sure, sure. so that is the biggest delta and the current work from home model is not covering that particular you know the the human connectivity part i think there is lot of way to improve the current system so that is my thoughts Sure, sure. the reason why that is happening right is because whenever you talk on i mean when you are working from home and you are on calls right you just talk to the point uh -huh. i mean you are talking about a problem if it is sorted okay bye and when you are in office you talk about that problem then you are like hey did you see the match did you see this <laughs> did you talk on this right so you talk on multiple things and and for uh, people who are joining out of college right for freshers it's very very important to have that those conversations because i i i heard about people mentioning that you know they have real friends and corporate friends right and it really works out well to so i mean i think it's very important for them to relate to people and to you know to uh, whom they are talking to because uh, that gives a more sense of belonging right because sure, uh, sure. not like you know i'm talking to the laptop <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's one thing and i think that's one reason uh, it should be kind of made uh, we should try to make efforts to come in when we are early in our career probably sure, i'm sure, not sure. like i'm putting a kind of a policy here but i'm just saying that you know that's something which will work out well so this is real friends versus real friends exactly <laughs> we have had a lot of like i've seen a lot of these debates like which works better and why that is so what i uh, understood is because uh, the online uh, like whatever uh, you are talking to people on these like apps microsoft or outlook or whatever they think that it is monitored they think that uh, <laughs> like even when i i might be sharing my screen and somebody else might see what chats i have uh, maybe i <laughs> talked about my manager to someone so they they are fearful about yeah. it they yeah. know that uh, that these devices are listening so mm. that point is covered when you are talking in person we are people are not fearful about that oh, so they wow. can be honest and upfront confidential conversations yeah. okay go on you Yeah I'll just state a counter intuitive point like usually we say that we end up building a lot of soft skills when you come to office so one of the softest skills that I built in the covid time was understanding the difference uh, when my manager says an angry okay you know <laughs> <laughs> like a like, disappointed like verbally okay. or in the chat no you know it like when they're on the call and they're saying an angry okay a disappointed okay an okay okay or a joyful okay <laughs> so you are actually able to pay attention to that tone that you oh, actually wow, in the office setting but because awesome. you can't see them you can't do anything you just have to make out from that okay if that <laughs> okay is really okay <laughs> So this is, I mean, these are some collection of questions I've got uh, from different sources. So I'm asking uh, these questions. Maybe this, uh, I'll ask Basker. Maybe that's his. I mean, you'll be the right person. Then others can. What are your thoughts on potential uh, long-term impact on this hybrid work, as we call it, on the company culture, mentorship, you know, creating friendships, uh, collaboration, or creativity in that matter? What's your what? What will be the long-term impact? see hybrid i think is is very beneficial because it lets people manage what they need to do at work with what they need to take care on the personal side so whenever they are in office or they are working they are probably more present so that's a very big positive but then i am i am making that statement also based on the fact that people will be in office on some days because that i feel is important without actually interacting with people that you that you work with or as he was saying that right, his whole team is based out of mumbai he's never met them he knows them he knows how they work but to actually uh, be able to relate to them in a better way it's always good to at least meet them once because then you can carry those conversations off 
from that in-person meeting to the virtual side as well. But coming in some days is very important and that's why hybrid, I think, is a very positive thing that, that we are seeing uh, around us. So, um, so right now, we had this discussion earlier about whether, like, how do we strike this balance, right, between working from home and working from the office. And I think for the most part, the solution that Fractal has right now is working well, right, giving everyone their own accountability and deciding when they want to work this and that, this and that. But as he mentioned, it, it really does like take a hit, right? So um, on average, you'd say like, so some companies, they go with a strategy that you need to do so many days in a week, or you need to do so many days in a month, or you need to do so many days so and so. And technically on paper that shows, yeah, 50% of the workforce is there in the office at all times. Now, there is a concern that rises, and I don't think there's a final point that I'll reach, it's just a concern I'm voicing. It's that, um, if, let's say, I work Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, someone else is working Tuesday, Thursday, it doesn't matter that we're going 50-50 to the office, we technically never see each other, mm -hmm. right? And um, that, that really creates a problem, right? Because uh, I remember when I joined, there were about uh, 11 or 12 people who came into the office on the first day, and about uh, 20, 25 odd people who didn't, because they were either working remotely or staying at home. And I don't know what happened, that number drastically dropped within the next two days, right? It mm. goes from 11 to four to two, right? Sure. And at any given time, you have two people in the office that you know, mm. right? And that doesn't really let you create like lasting friendships or lasting, let's say brotherhood or sisterhood or however you want to put it, <laughs> camaraderie between your team, because it's, it's never certain, right? Mm. And I think it's very important that in some way that standardizes to some extent, not to a great extent, but some company-wide or team-wide or office-wide like events and things sure, like that do sure, go a long sure. way in making that a lot better. Sure, yeah, I'd, sure. I'd like to add to that. So like he said, that concern, like let's say we are a team of five, three of us decide to come Tuesday, Thursday and the others. So in that case, we can just, so this is what I do with my manager. I ask him a day prior, are you coming today or no? Let me know. And then we decide to come on common days so that we can have that interaction. So there's an overlap. Okay. So okay. then there is that bond also and there are any problems we can discuss. Now, the problem that I see is, let's say I'm working in a project where my manager is sitting in Mumbai. In that case, there's no means by which I can meet him so in person okay. unless he comes here or I go there. So if we can somehow bridge that gap, I think that should help. But otherwise, if you have just more communication with your team, come to common grounds I said these days we'll come to office these days I think that should be but otherwise I think hybrid is great sure, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things um, you know to what Bhaskar mentioned if I were to just extend that logic um, see you know at which stage of your career you are and what is the trade-off that you will have with the hybrid that will differ you know quite significantly like mm. he mentioned at his formative years of work X, because this could be his first job or second job, he's trying to still understand what a corporate culture is. You know, 80% of his time potentially is going in developing his own skills because he's in the knowledge industry, for example. Okay, so it's very inward focus on yourself. But as he, you know, develops more additional leadership skills, you know, how to lead a complex problem, you know, allocate work, you know, supervise work, that is where the challenge will come in, okay? And that mm. is where striking the balance is. Now, for Bhaskar, it may not be the challenge because those skills he has already honed in a very different, you know, environment. You know, environment mm. Okay, so the pressure on whether the skills are tested or not is already done. He's already done the hard work because he's past that stage. And the other thing that we should always keep in mind is human beings, you know, as a race by nature is always, uh, you know, you know, you know, I would say slave to habits. Sure, you form a sure. habit to come to office that stays with you and suddenly when you move away from the habit, then you have your other issues to say that I've lo you know, let go of that habit. So I think that is something that we need to keep in sure, mind. But sure. balance, striking the balance is the most important aspect. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So uh, my point here is that hybrid work really is the way I think forward, giving, keeping in mind the uh, also that every workforce, workplace nowadays has got multi-generational workforce. We have people, you know, seniors and we have people like, you know, the Zen Z's or Zen X. Uh, I, I lose <laughs> track of that. <laughs> and, um, you know, you literally have uh, the, the needs and wants, what they want versus somebody else at a senior level is very different, right? So how do you address that? So this hybrid work kind of helps people 
um, you know, do that. And I also think there's nothing called work-life balance. There is work, and then there is There's life, life, and then you have to give importance to it at at that time. And then and a hybrid work probably is the best setup sure, to sure. make that happen. That you live your life, and at the same time, and there is work, and you have to extend working hours and do something. If there's a immediate delivery to be done, you extend your working hours. Sure. At the same time, you have something happening at home, and you really need one extra day off. You also take an extra day off. So I think corporates or any organizations recognizing this. that the needs what it was for this generation for this time is very different from what it was maybe 20 30 years ago that even is four very years important ago, right yeah, <laughs> yeah even 20 years ago like i don't know when i started my career i never thought of uh, work life sure. balance right yeah. we're always <laughs> 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 ियस <laughs> Uh, and how are we going to apply back culture i think what got us here to this 4000 will not get us to hold that culture mm, sure. so that trade off so it's a next like we need to hold and say do we want to hold culture and then scale or do we do want to hold culture and scale if we want to then there is a difficult uh, work that we need to work on sure, uh, sure to really sure. protect it and it's very hard like what you just have to work like wi- if you work like a wifi hotspots now mm-hmm. uh, you mm-hmm. need to actually scale it and see how <laughs> it's it's very difficult to even visualize that Sure. I yeah, actually yeah. have a counterpoint uh, which hasn't been mentioned yet. So if we had the work from office culture and everybody was coming to the office, so we would uh, actually not be talking to different people. Like people are saying, na, that if you come to the office, you talk to people outside of teams, outside uh, like working in different streams. But that would not happen if uh, everybody was coming to the office. People would sit with their teams and within their own groups. There would be groups, and you will sit with them at lunch, and you wouldn't have this opportunity that you have right now. So there is an upside. of uh, this Absolutely. hybrid Absolutely. no no the, i was talking to some teams in mumbai <coughs> the exact point right at fractal if you see any projects at fractal uh, there is a consultant there is a data scientist there is an engineer there is a design so they work as a group by design they speak to other departments and and one of the employees were I was speaking to she was saying the exact thing right yeah, anish earlier we used to everyone used to be in office and some or the other thing we used to know everyone and we used to go let's say if i work for this client i know that client what is that client doing but today like what he said there are only few people who are coming so we are now limited only to the project it's not that the designer or the engineer or the data scientist is coming is only me and maybe one other colleague is coming right okay that's also a real problem but yeah let's let me jump into the second quick question what's one mental health cliche or stereotype you have encountered at work that needs debunking aaj a half day hai kya you know that's that's kind of a uh, thing or or whatever whatever other things this is one thing which i can think of we sh- even i have done it usually for with friends the biggest one right for me amish is uh, those who are singles are the ones who can stretch more than those who have families I think that's ah, the biggest that's stereotype the biggest that stereotype. unconsciously a lot of us tend yes. to develop. So can you just little bit So for deep. example if Dinesh and I are part of the same team I have recently got married Dinesh is yet to get married any extension of work that comes in for which you need to stay late or you need to stretch a little bit more that will tend to go towards Dinesh because he has less responsibility in life. <laughs> just because he's single exactly okay e- essentially it is the need for that you know personal time you automatically in your mind stereotype mm. that because the person is singular single you know has lesser things to focus so you know load up a little bit more okay. but i think the other thing you know i wouldn't call it as a stereotype but the other thing is like abhishek mentioned um, you know accessibility to resources etc is i think each firm is doing we are also trying to do our own bit around it i think the place where we would like to see significant dial movement is it's seeping uh, into the styles of all the leaders because you mm-hmm. need to understand that it flows from the top not the bottom up so it needs to you know come naturally in the style as it develops you will actually see 
you know, people below learning from the leaders. So it needs to flow from the top. Sure, sure. And I'd like to add one more point, right? So, uh, so normally what happens is uh, when somebody says they're stressed and you see a lag in their work, if people automatically assume that they're just unable to work or they're creating reasons for not to work, right? I think that's the first sort of uh, stereotype. And then and I think it's very important to sort of uh, understand uh, and understand the reason why somebody is actually unable to put in that effort or if somebody says I'm stressed, then it is a genuine thing, right? So you would want to actually understand, but uh, most times what happens is people tend to relate that to non-performance or inability to work. And, and I think that needs to be sort of uh, carefully managed because if you actually go down the same route, then you'll actually put more pressure on the person and it leads to very, very difficult consequences, sure. right? So uh, I, I've seen quite a few of those, uh, especially uh, post-COVID, I would say, uh, because people mm -hmm. are at home, people do not have social interactions and stress can be related to anything, right? Uh, somebody said it is very difficult if I don't get out of the house and yeah. most people for locked in for a few days, right? So I think uh, we'll have to be a bit more open and actually listen to people uh, and then try to figure out or what mm -hmm. is what is it that we can do to sort of uh, help them in those situations. You yeah. don't have any preconceived notions and as exactly. you stop down leadership. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd say so whenever you're taking a sick off and the next day you join back and somebody asks what happened, are you okay now? Mm. So there is a tendency to, you know, cook up a reason and say, you know, I was, I had fever or I had cold cough. Maybe you were just not feeling good, but you don't mm. feel that confidence <laughs> to say that, you know, I was not feeling good and that's why I couldn't work. So you end up looking for tangible diseases or tangible physical reasons that mm. give a mental wellness reason that I just took a wellness off. Ah, okay. So at Fractal, do you... Do you have to give reasons at Fractal? For no. no, if somebody just asks out of care what happened to you, then instead of saying I took oh, a wellness okay. off, you would probably <laughs> say something else. Okay, so is, do you think there's a stigma around yes. it? Like yes. if let's say I'm, I'm not feeling something mm. today, right? I'm off mentally or whatever, right? And I can take an off and I can tell it to my boss or my peers. Yeah. Do you think people, like you said, is there any stigma around yeah, it? I'm not. I think it really varies person to person. Sometimes you have really supportive people you can reach out and say very clearly to. But it's a p individual perception more than a corporate perception at this point of time because we are still building in that awareness of mental awareness. Sure, so right sure, now it's sure. not inculcated in every individual. But yeah, I think leadership, I would say have it. Somewhere down the middle, there is still a little mm. fluctuation there. It's a function of relationship as to between the individual and the supervisory chain, you know, sure, you sure, know sure. how comfortable you feel. If the bond is strong, you will probably tell much more than what mm -hmm. you actually ask for. If the bond is very weak and superficial, that's the manifestation of sure, it. Sure, sure. It's yeah, not normalized at all, like taking a day off because yeah. I'm not feeling all right. Mm. Or in the middle of the day, you just get overwhelmed with something and you feel like, okay, two hours, I'm going to shut down my system and take a break and then resume maybe in the evening. Sure, sure. So, sure. Yeah, even yeah. I've caught myself doing that. So I think we should normalize it. Like when you have an off day, we should be able to openly say that to our manager and take that sick leave. Sure, sure. So I had this uh, thing that I honestly never had to lie. One thing is I can't. <laughs> it somehow I go and, and uh, just tell the truth but I have had very supportive managers to be very honest like if I'm not feeling like working if there's something that's bothering me I can openly go and tell them and they never take it negatively in fact they will help me deal with it sure. they listen to me and then they'll tell me how can I deal with it so I personally never had to lie or uh, so it it or it's good. not lying, it's not it's, telling. It's not telling, yeah. <laughs> I, I always ended up like having this sure, very open sure, conversation, sure, sure. yeah. See, yeah. the fact okay. that you're thinking that you're lying because of... <laughs> no, I mean, it's a genuine yeah, point, yeah. right? Yeah. What I'm trying to yeah. say is, it is so uh, sort of bad on both sides that you're going through something and the fear of actually telling yeah. it out yeah. is actually... is The trust is, isn't there, right? Or, mm -hmm. or maybe the fear, or maybe the fear of actually 
not being able to express it in the right way is what causes a lot of uh, imbalance right so i think uh, yeah. actually like i think there is from experience is another side to it which is when people take it too seriously because being from gen z like uh, uh, a lot of the times if i'm not feeling okay i will communicate it and it happens and sometimes it has led to like escalations where like people in the team my manager was uh, coming uh, on meetings and like what happened w w did somebody say something to you and then it kind of became an escalation when i was just not feeling good so it's mm -hmm. like yeah there has to be a balance ki, okay if somebody is not feeling good it could be a number of different reasons maybe some other external factors not sure, just work sure, sure. so adding on to that as vartika mentioned that leadership has a clear but uh, there might be something in the middle so since i am also an imagineer and i have worked on different projects so there are uh, there has been certain instances when i have taken leaves for uh, like there uh, there might be some off day or something but uh, i have got as uh, in many case, cases i have gotten the support from the manager or my team lead but there has been certain certain cases where i have been told to be stoic enough to not mm, to not <laughs> let the outside thing impact uh, your mind I like the word, be stoic enough लाइफ है होता है दिस इज समथिंग दैट 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 विल टेक सम टाइम टू बी इन कल्चर टोटली बट या लाइक आई फ्रॉम द थिंग दैट वी सी यर इन फ्रैक्टल विच इज रैपिडली ग्रोइंग इन ऑल द डायमेंशन एंड ऑल्सो इन द कल्चर दैट वी पुट वैल्यू इन टू मच सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट दैट दे आर वर्किंग ऑन एंड देर इज दिस जनरेशनल गैप ऑल्सो बट वी ऑल आर वर्किंग इट ऑन एज अ टीम एंड like as they progresses we are better people and we are trying to understand the problem sure, of what sure. someone is going through and being stoic is good but being <laughs> stoic uh, till It's a point <laughs> uh, yes so another point i would like to add uh, sometimes we take leave and we try to come up with some story in terms of physically i'm not well but also i'm thinking another important part is mental health right so sometimes we are not comfortable to share with any other person you know i'm mentally i mean not feeling well or burn out so that is also very crucial for us right it is absolutely okay i think we should normalize if you are not mentally feeling okay or stable i think you should take some leave and come again with some full energy or sure, yeah sure, so that sure, is also sure. another important part i'd say sure sure vijay so one of the aspect i was feeling very jealous when i came into fractal was you know people just taking off and then i was like what is this <laughs> all about and then i deeply understood that it's the ownership that people have and the decision is left to them so i've never come across where someone says i have stomach pain like this <laughs> or <laughs> uncle passed away and they are in <laughs> niagara falls taking a photo right uh, at fractal it's more open that sure, look sure. i'm taking a break and for whatever reason nobody is actually even asking for a reason mm. so you are able to take it with that sense of freedom sure. now the stereotype is something i've observed maybe post covid is when people take these long breaks and i feel still feel jealous about it and i definitely want to take that will when they come back the stereotype is that they should be rejuvenated and fresh and all that <laughs> honestly not there is so much that you pounds on them so the stereotype is that never underestimate that someone who's come back is as someone who's really fresh and so you can keep push keep everything pushing to them that. back to system it does take more time maybe it's post covid so in fact all right we we don't have a leave policy if you think about it and uh, no one asks for a reason why you took a leave and even in system we ask you to record it doesn't go for approval you just record it is just auto approved right it just goes and uh, how many ever leave one takes it doesn't matter we believe that everyone are adults and they will you know have their own uh, stuff so uh, but that will also the back flip side of it is we miss talking about these important things right if we have actually taken a leave for let's say a, a, a slow down or some kind of a problems that we have mentally we are not able to you know speak it i think that that has to come up a little bit more i think uh, of course leaders have to do more about it uh, but that's the reason practical does not go behind these fads like okay a bereavement leave okay period leave okay that leave okay this pet leave okay we don't do all that we just say there is leave you guys want leave take leave be adults be own your own you know stuff right that's where fact um i was about to say that um uh, abhishek spoke about empathy that also comes from the fact that in realizing what is important for me may not be important for you and what is important for you i may not feel important but still i respect the importance that you give in your life 
I'll give you a couple of examples. I have seen a lot of people in Fractal who love their pets, for example, and they like to take a break just to stay with the pet, or the pet is not feeling well, taking to the hospital. I may not feel that is very important because I don't have a pet, or I may not like the pet at all. <laughs> <laughs> But understanding that that pet plays a very important part in an employee's life, personal life, also gives me as a manager, um, you know, that opportunity to give that mind space to that employee and say, okay, you take a break, finish all your stuff, then come back with 100% productivity, right? Uh, I have seen many people, uh, most of my colleagues, my team members, uh, many times they are in calls saying that hey, I'm coming back from the school picking up my son, daughter, etc. What we see there is they've gone, taken a break and gone to the school. What we don't see is they've put that extra effort of even attending that call while coming back from the school. Absolutely. Right? Uh, that is the missing part. As you know, the moment we start seeing that, I think empathy naturally grows. In fractal, we all spoke about the culture, the goods and the bads and whatever it is, right? In fractal, uh, do you feel that you can openly talk about mental health? Yeah, I would say yes, because uh, it's about breaking the ice there. And uh, uh, what I realized in the last two to three years is the moment you start having a conversation, you realize that it's so easy to discuss this. So all the stereotypes, apprehensions and the barriers, they all easily break. And uh, one of the things that uh, I learned through action or practice is that uh, as leaders or managers, it is your job to take the first step and share your experience or you know be very truthful and honest and then that sets the tone for the team and I have realized that more and more of uh, you know my team members are open to share once you start sharing it. Sure, so sure. it is easy in Fractal and uh, I have used the self-help portal, one-to-one -one help portal and other things in Fractal. So we have a lot of avenues where you can speak and we are you know, enabling these services for the team as well. Sure, sure. So, so be vulnerable as a leader also is very important. Yeah, Finish, I team. think plus one to that. I think it's easy to speak. I think the culture and the atmosphere within the organization fosters that nobody has to feel stigmatized if they have to talk about it. Uh, but one thing I also feel is that a little more awareness is necessary. Sure, like sometimes, sure. uh, uh, you know, what is mental health, that the whole definition and it's very like hazy. what is important. Like, you know, sometimes you may, it may just be your overwork or stressed, <coughs> it may nothing and you may be, there's been nothing, right, uh, related to your mental health. So, how do you understand that you are having some problems? May, that, you know, that awareness is not there. I feel people just use those words very loosely sometimes. So that awareness is also sure, important. Sure. You may just need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, fractal does more than what I've yes. seen uh, yeah. across the board, right? So uh, I remember specifically during COVID and maybe immediately after COVID, we had actually doctors, psychologists who came in and gave talks at fractal, uh, and uh, and it was all to actually tell people to just open up, right? And uh, Sajin was mentioning. It's also letting our leaders uh, be a bit more open, right? So when when I take a day off, I tell them that I'm doing X, Y, and Z, and it may be that I'm playing or I'm taking a day off because I don't feel like working, so that it actually sort of uh, makes it a bit more okay for everybody to also take a day off because because they want to do something that they like, right? And there's a lot of emphasis that actually goes on mental health and uh, and I think well-being and work-life balance. It is difficult when you have client first and <laughs> you know <laughs> timelines, pressures, and others. But there's always a solution that you can work out, right? Uh, I think the the one good thing that we have at Fractal is leadership is always approachable, right? Uh, if you're in if you're in a situation where you're stuck, uh, you don't have to sort of go through the hierarchy. You can reach out to anybody that you can. And help is only a call away, right? So we keep telling our teams that uh, just call, speak to someone and somebody will <coughs> help you out, right? Uh, and I think this also relates to the hybrid work thing. If It's important yeah. because some people may not feel that they can communicate mm -hmm. if they're remote. But I think bringing them in and somebody having a conversation and the fact that you understand that something is happening in their life may actually make you take an action as well, right? So, uh, sure. so I think in that sense, I think we we continue to do a lot, 
but i agree there is still a lot of awareness that needs to be built in uh, other thing i want to say is we're all talking about managers and leaders and middle level right i think it's everyone right uh, yeah. it may be it may be a colleague that is sitting right next to you who's going through a tough time mm. and it is just checking in right just checking in whether sure. they're okay whether things okay so it is everyone's responsibility to but to share at the same time also check i think just people just ask how are you <laughs> i think people in fractal are very approachable that way like if i have a problem and let's say there's none of my friends in office i think i've gone and spoken to baskar also but it it's very approachable that way so i've never got this like oh i have this problem but there's no one to talk to there's always someone and you can be pretty open about it so i don't think there is any stigma like okay i can't go and tell him he's a client partner as <laughs> no i can go <laughs> well uh, I'll, i'll agree with uh, everything that has been spoken the culture in fractal of course encourages that openness that um, people are approachable in general right um, i think as a leader we need to do a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, primarily two things you know number one i think it's okay for a leader to be vulnerable as well once in a while in front of the team we can talk about taking a wellness break we can talk about some of the challenges that we faced in our career that sure, might inspire sure, sure. someone else as well second thing is i think when you know when we were starting our careers we didn't have the resources and the tools and the systems available to address mental health mm -hmm, mm -hmm. over a period of time some of us in the leadership positions have kind of built those systems embedded those systems in our lifestyle and it's important to kind of talk about that as well like for example if you have if you have created a habit of meditating for 20 minutes or 30 minutes sure, every sure. day right how you do it what is that method what is that heuristic that you follow it's important to talk about that as well because i think that's how culture gets created and when you're propagating this knowledge that's when the real mental health awareness becomes sure, more effective sure sure and maybe i'll quickly add one thing to that right and uh, exemplifying what you're looking for uh, as a leader becomes very important and how you do that in your first few interactions with people i think stands out for example for me the first question typically if i'm meeting somebody in office is of course what team you're working in what kind of work you do Sure. But the second question for me always is, what do you do outside of work? Mm -hmm. Because that I think is an important part that most of us miss out on. Because that balance we don't know. That's that's unfortunately <coughs> how a lot of us grow up. Mm -hmm. Just asking that question, I have actually had people come to me after five years, six years, and tell me that I have picked up a new hobby because you asked that question. I did not know before that that I should be doing something outside of work. Mm -hmm. So work is just an identity. Ab uh, absolutely. Lots of other things. Uh, i think uh, the most important aspect at least for me what i've seen so far an employee sees the organization through the manager right i i might have 100 best friends in the organization but when i make a mistake it is the manager whom i am expecting to pat my back and say it's okay we'll take care of it you know it's a different thing my best friend will come and say chalta hai that's okay but it's what matters to me more is my manager coming and telling me that uh i can share my personal experience here you know there was a time in my career in fractal where nothing was going good um, you know to an extent that you know i was going into a rebellion mode you know i didn't like anything about fractal uh, right and anish knows this much better because uh, at that time he became my manager <laughs> <laughs> you guys know how what on door i had to get to <laughs> and he had the toughest time with me we got into a wrong foot to start with and there was a time when anish reached out and said let's talk and find out what is your problem you know and that one conversation you know took both of us relationship to a different place altogether as a manager and employee and that gave me a lot of things to do in fractal uh, so it's it's very important you know we have people at grade 7 6 5 at different corners we have managers today it's a thing it's a different thing that we do a lot of wellness programs get psychologists doctors you know speeches everything but i think it should be an essential part of a manager grooming and training as to how you sure how you manage your team mm -hmm. in of this course. aspect yeah absolutely adding one one point just small point so uh, 
this is again more from the aware, uh, awareness perspective uh, so long time back like you know it was so much about mental health and you know issues and for me it was like okay uh, I know I'm aware about it. Now, what should I do about it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then, uh, there are a lot of ways, like you know, you do this, you do that. But the question is like, uh, unless until I'm really aware about the real hidden thing, can I can anything really solve for it, right? So if I say meditation can solve for it, like I don't know, like I tried it mm -hmm. for so many years, right? I sat for one hour, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, so, so what I felt like, you know, ki, uh, you just sit for one hour, what, what, what are you doing? Like, you're just mm. looking for a peace of mind, and then you're back to your, you know, wo like doing like the, the regular stuff, job, right? Job. So does it really help? So is, is it like, you know, are we really aware about us all the time? Right? Do we, are we aware about our thoughts? Are we aware about, aware about the movement? Right? Sure, sure. Why are we depressed? Do you want to get really deep into it? Like nobody, maybe we are but we do not we are scared of getting into the depth of it right sure, sure why sure. why are we depressed right so, so you think self awareness is very low very 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 low yeah. okay so this is one of the questions we have received <coughs> basically uh, you know some argue that there is a always on culture that is a intensified with remote work do you think first of all it's valid and if you think it's valid how is it affecting the mental well being personally for you or the team if you have seen Right. So, I would uh, agree to it. I think there is that uh, culture of always on work mode when you, you know, you are remote or you are working from home, etc. And I think few of the discussions from Abhishek and Vijay were mentioning that kind of problems we solve in Fractal, right? Like, this is not where uh, someone would join in and uh, they had get a, you know, uh, SOP of 10 steps and they follow it for the rest couple of months, right? This is a team that would innovate, would find, uh, you know, automate, uh, would do great things. So, when you are solving tough problems each day and you get so engrossed to it and you do not have a boundary. So, when you actually work from home, uh, there's no blurred boundaries. There's literally no boundaries. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. get, tend to get into that always on mode. So, I think uh, one of the uh, stereotypes that I think was briefly mentioned was uh, mental exhaustion. So, that is something that's definitely going to happen if you get into this always on mode. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are a couple of ways that I try to overcome that and I've seen the leaders around uh, do that is to try to create some kind of a boundary. Uh, so, uh, uh, coming to office is my <laughs> boundary. So, <laughs> the reason you so find me so often in office is that you know, when you check in and check out, your, your my mom always says, please leave your work at office. Mm. Please leave the work. So, when you're actually leaving, you feel like, okay, you're actually leaving your baggage, leaving your, uh, you know, all your tasks and that stress okay. over and uh, leaving. So, that is one way. And if you're uh, at home and you actually prefer that ways of working, there are also certain hacks and tips that you can do. So, Sandeep in one of the APAC town hall, he mentioned that he actually dresses up. Like, he puts on a suit, he puts on his boot and everything and sits at home. <laughs> in front of his table so even in your teams right you just see the face you don't necessarily have to put on your shoe and everything so he actually puts in so that he can do that boundary differentiate. and differentiate so these kind of things can actually help so otherwise you do run into this uh, trouble of being always that always on, on mode um, I think the first step is to you know not try and look for superficial language to say that it is not there let's address the elephant in the room it is there okay this this always on culture is here um, it's data backed uh, to give you very anecdotal information um, you know in my previous stint we had done an analysis during peak covid when a lot of large corporations moved you know to to online work large application outsourcing work okay in the it services world data was showing for three months post COVID when everything went hybrid and, and remote that the number of CRs being closed by everybody in a large 200 member team was, mm. you know, the productivity was up by 30%. Yeah. Okay. It was out there in the open. Can you also Not say what a CR? Yeah. It's, it's change request change on, a, on a large SAP platform, etc. So it's out there in the open, you know, it's not some fictitious data. I think the important thing right now, what people are finding a challenge is that because you're able to do so much more with those additional two hours and additional two hours here, because there is no pressure to catch a, you know, mode of transport to go back home. You're trying to push yourself more to cover more. And invariably, there is also a chain effect. 
where your supervisory chain is also trying to say that let me give two more you know i think this also should be so able to be done everybody is equally responsible in the ecosystem for that okay and everybody is guilty including maybe say me you or anybody for that matter it is a real problem it's not fictitious and on a lighter note right adding to that one of the biggest changes i had to do once i started coming back to office after covid was to consciously give a gap between meetings because we all unconsciously got used to back to back meetings because you didn't have to go from room to room you didn't have people around you to talk interact with and once i came back to office i was late to every single meeting by at least 10 minutes so because you bump into somebody you start having some conversations in the aisle as you are going to the next meeting those things are natural that do happen uh, which was missing as as we all i, I think went remote Sure, sure, sure. I think a couple of points on always on or connected, right? Uh, see, you're connected to work, right? You're you're with a client, whether you're a data scientist or an engineer or someone in leadership. You're consciously thinking throughout the day about what can I do to do better, right? Whether it be learning or whether it be delivery or a problem that you're solving, it is happening, and you're thinking, right? The the expectation that you're working from home uh, and you can stretch. is not said by anybody right it is assumed or some sometimes it's actually sort of uh, you know a self made decision that okay i've saved 2 hours in traffic so let me do 2 hours more but the thing is it's it's people's boundaries you can set your own boundaries and nobody is going to question if you're going to take an hour off in between or if baskar is not going to attend a meeting for half an hour slot it's it's his calendar right he can manage his calendar so sure. so i think the boundaries are something that are more personal and and i think the trust is what you need to build right and i think immediately after covid i think there was a big surge because probably no one knew how to manage it yeah. but what i'm seeing lately is there is a there are a group of people who actually draw that line and say okay this is my time to go pick up my daughter or son sure. or this is my time to actually do something and they draw that boundary whether they are at work or at home and i think some folks still try to sort of some folks probably got used to that uh, to that uh, always on which is not really always Sorry. on it is like you extend your work into into things that that probably matter and probably that is what is causing uh, a lot of burnout as we as we started right so i think this always on culture started way before covid also when this laptop was invented and blackberry was <laughs> on yeah. there but uh, how about the new folks yeah. so because you have seen the work uh, oh, after the jay that yeah see maybe uh, you know i might be t- a lot different to what all are saying here the always on has remained so for example the profession i come from a lot of my classmates are all practicing so they are all treating Doctors. patients uh, all are always on the point is they know how to go sometimes off so they pick up meditation they pick up spirituality they pick up car racing so in a way they like a surgeon is always on the patient is admitted so operated came back want to know right so all doctors are always on there's never about turning off but they've learned how to live with that always on and mm-hmm. switch a second like a step down transformer or a step right sure, like, like sure. a second ramp it's just that we've not got used to that mm-hmm. so we feel the the pain of always on uh, and it's come out new and we don't know what to do with it right but the always on has been there for Since human. Sure. I second that. That always on culture is there from a long time, and it's magnified now because after this COVID and working. But but I do um, plus one to what Dinesh was saying, right? That you need to draw your boundaries, and uh, sometimes I also feel the examples that leaders set for their teams is also makes a big difference. Um, that you need to be very mindful because sure. you may be having some extra time, or you may. wanting to work at orders and doesn't mean that everybody should be on all the time <clears throat> a simple example is like i'm an early riser and i like to look at my mails like very early sometimes in the mornings but i don't send the mails out at a time it to send it after 9 sure, simply sure. because i don't want my team to think that i'm working You're all the time and so i need to also respond immediately and i make it a point to tell sometimes in my team that there are i have some very weird working habits <laughs> i should say so i might you know but doesn't sure. mean that you should respond to me you know immediately, uh, immediately. Yeah, sure so sometimes yeah. when i send out emails i also write that this does not require response until monday morning so don't send it sure, so you should sure. be very conscious of that then people also around you will be because i've seen a tendency sure. that if you are said that example that you're always responsive whatever time of the day or night or then that 
the team gets very stressed out. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I think as juniors, you have this tendency to constantly be available for the seniors because you know that <laughs> they are the ones right. whose calendars are more blocked and you are the one who's <laughs> relatively free. So you have to constantly <laughs> adjust to their schedules. But something that I learned all along the way is that I was in one of these calls and this senior said that it was a two hour call. And after one hour, he said that there's something important that I have to attend to. Mm. And he did not know that I'm in office and he was also there in the office. So mm. I just went to pick up some coffee or something and I saw him play carrom over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that, you know, this is the kind of personal boundary that people created. Like, mm. okay, debatable whether that was right or wrong or whatever. Mm. But when I saw people actually drawing that personal boundary sure. on the leadership level, then I thought, that, okay, maybe even I can say that I want to play an extra match of TT and then I'll join the call five minutes late. So that absolutely. comes from the top. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So what we are planning to do is to play an audio clip of the first episode. There's some points made by some of the fractalites. So we'll play that audio clip. You guys hear, take 30 seconds, internalize it, then come up with your views, right? It can be a friendly rebuttal or it can be, uh, you know, for it or not for it. But don't comment just for the sake of commenting it, but, you know, think about it a little bit. That's why I said take the 30 seconds, which is very good, the, then start commenting, right? So we wanted to basically understand these are senior leaders who are talking uh, these points and they have very, uh, you know, strong viewpoints on those things. Uh, this is new generation, right? You may have a different viewpoint. That's completely okay, but we want to know. That's how we evolve the culture. That's how we create the culture, right? That's the overall point. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, the queue, please. If we define each of our responsibilities doing the work done, then we can work from home and we can do it. But the big question is, can we build culture? Can I become the part of the larger organization culture behind the switched off camera when I'm away from people? And my answer is no. Yeah. So that was, that was uh, Biju, uh, you know, talking about uh, working from home plus working from office and the culture bit, right? I think we have heard it. If you want, we can play it again. If anyone wants to play it again, we can play it again. But we'll, I'll open it up for, you know, first, I think the new uh, workforce which is here, we'll open it up for you guys first, then, you know, with the tenure track lights. Yeah, I absolutely agree with the person said that because mm -hmm. uh, when you're working from home, it feels very transactional that you're given a task and you just complete it and that's the end of it. But when you're working from an office, it feels like you are working with your colleagues, you are trying to build something or you're trying to solve something and that's I, that's, I think, how you build a culture in an office. So sure, yeah. sure. I I completely agree to what I think Biju said that because if you're working from home, you're basically working in your room. You're never going to see the person who you're working with. So it's uh, like Shreya said, it's very transactional. He's giving me work, I'm doing work, that's it. But if I'm in office, I'm interacting with people and I think people make culture. If you're not going to meet people, you're not going to build any culture. It's just going to go down. So I think it's very important to come to office meet people, you get to know different people, different opinions, you make friends. So I think it's really important to be in to office. Be this. Yeah. Uh, I think another point that he brought up that is very important is, is that, like, like it was said, uh, if you think of your work as just a series of tasks, then sure, it becomes very transactional, right? And on top of that, what happens is your responsibilities become very siloed. Right? especially working from home, not interacting. There's no scope for learning passively from people. There's no real scope for any sort of orthogonal expansion. You kind of get stuck in whatever like branch or whatever field you're in. Right? There's no opportunities to expand. And I think most of the more experienced people here will agree that without that exposure, it becomes very difficult to kind of move up the chain and kind of bring different branches and different purview under your own sure. umbrella. And all in all, I think it makes a lot more sense to just be a little more aware, which is a little difficult working from home. Mm -hmm. I think one of the aspects that we have missed so far is the fact that a part of a culture is also the freedom that we enjoy. And I think if we take away that freedom of not, if you don't want to come to office, don't come to office. That's also an integral part of our culture. So I wouldn't put a straight no to it that, you know, not coming to office means you're not a part of the culture. In fact, for a very long time, till the COVID period was on, we were all onboarded virtually. And for a very long time, we were working virtually. And honestly, that mm. was the most number of town halls I've attended in that period of one year <laughs> when I was working from home. 
because i wanted to be a active member of the community and i was attending so many events that would happen online and right now because i'm coming to office i'm paying slightly less attention on that part so sure, i think sure. it's upon the individual to try to mingle into the culture and freedom being a very important aspect of it i won't say it's a clear no that if you don't come to office you're not a part of the culture i wouldn't agree to that so i would partially agree with that point because i would say like working from home is a not replacement of working from office because when you work from home it has certain benefit and some advantages and disadvantages as well but how we can understand people i think totally based on the team based on the company culture and we have to be very mindful when we are working from home like the hum human connections and empathy is kind of missing in that working from home sure, sure. in that particular mode so that is quite crucial when you are working from home um no but uh, all of these points are just uh, advantages and disadvantages of working from home or working from office but the thing about culture is it can be communicated online you are still talking i am still in contact with my manager so mm. his working style the way he interacts the way he interacts with the team and with me i see him uh, in the meetings mm. so it reflects everywhere and i see the client first mm. culture just being in the meetings it's it's not something that i would only see if i came to the office it's from working you and interacting with people even online you can very easily see and observe ki how uh, the company sees it okay okay so you're saying in online also it's 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 yeah, possible it to yeah and it has been happening for quite some time since like we all have been like in the online phase for quite some time still mm -hmm. we are here and sitting and talking about culture of fractal and we all kind of have some synergy and some common points you can see everybody is uh, mentioning so that means ki we all are aware of it maybe because of attending town halls maybe somebody who hasn't attended town halls but i still know ki okay uh, we are transparent we we can take unlimited leaves and all of the sure. principles and values they are still very very uh, apparent even in the online uh. sure sure so i, I think i have to rebut to uh, vatika's point right i mean the the concept or the main issue here is how we imbibe culture and not how we understand it right so it's highly personal i agree that you know it's it's perspective way some people can actually connect to it online but i mean to understand it if you are mm. not interacting because it's very uh, some people told about transactional uh, you know charts happening on calls and you know it's uh, very very limited to a particular problem or context right so i think the challenge what biju was talking about right was that if we cannot actually see the person how do i imbibe the culture onto him right mm -hmm. and and off is off camera i can't even see his expressions right so i i'm maybe i'm just talking unilaterally and that person is not even listening to me right so he was addressing that issue and probably we have to think about because from an organizational perspective we have to think mm -hmm. about one kind of a policy on it right or not policy i mean one kind of uh, you know way of communicating that right or how do we imbibe that culture into every fractal light right so uh, yeah I, i i don't have a solution to it but i, I think <laughs> that's one of my uh, points i would say i would actually agree to what biju is saying um but i'll just probably pepper it with two important points one um what you know a 100% virtual workforce can feel like a gun for hire kind of a setup okay very mercenary to say that you know it's i've been given a paycheck mm -hmm. and there are some transactions expected out of me and i am doing that i have nothing else you know you know nothing else there is no emotion but if you actually see you know very very successful workforces in you know companies big mm -hmm. small irrespective there is a sense of purpose or there is that secret sauce which is beyond your paycheck because the first thing that goes off the shelf is your paycheck it will its relevance is only till the you know for the first three paychecks after that it's secondary after that it's your supervisor quality of work the company sure, culture sure, etc sure. i think that aspect and how do you draw the balance between a 100% you know virtual workforce versus you know some sort of method to the madness to say what's the frequency roster mm -hmm. whatever whatever works for that team or that tribe it's very important else uh, you know you will just or at least a firm will just end up becoming a very mercenary in the approach to say that sure, you have a sure. distributed workforce in remote corners mm. they will never understand what the firm stands for i think that firm building in the yes, minds sir. of people which is the stickiness beyond paycheck i think that is yeah, where it comes yes, yeah. i'll just add i'll just say there are a lot of companies in the world today yeah. who has uh, Uh, adopted a fully work from home robot work right i know a mm -hmm. lot of large uh, not la i mean large product companies i have not seen any service but mostly product companies right they, and they've been able to 
somehow sustain the culture with that in mind. You know, there is a line which is used quite commonly, the devil lies in the detail, yes. yeah. all right? Yeah. You know, only when you start going beyond the superficial data and start looking at the churn data and at what point that churn is happening, okay? Why is it not the end goal? Why is it just a stepping stone to some other firm? Mm -hmm. That is when you start understanding that where is that secret sauce which is coming off at a certain point. For some companies, it is 12th month. For some companies, it is 24 months. For some company, it could be between 36 to 48 40, months. Mm -hmm. Okay, why are we not able to take the workforce age more for them to still see a purpose to continue more. That is where the question Gosh, and the yeah, answer so both lies. Sure. Yeah. yeah, while uh, like while I tend to, okay. my brain tends to logically agree with them, my experience doesn't. Uh, I, uh, this is a real experience, uh, and we all know Starbucks for the culture, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I was in New York and I had purchased uh, an Americano. It was a flavored Americano. And I was happily sipping this Americano on the, at, the barista came in and said, sir, we've given you the wrong uh, uh, Americano. I was like, no, I feel fine because it is a different flavor. It was a jasmine flavored. And I didn't know what is the difference between a jasmine flavored and another flavor which he gave. He Twice. said, sir, this is not the right flavor, so I'll take it back. I said, okay, I'm okay with this. I really don't know between those two. He said, no, sorry, sir. It's our job to be sure that we give you what you asked for. If you, I had asked for this, I would have given this to you, but we're going to replace it. So what he did is he went back, changed it, gave me back uh, the change, mm. the difference. And he gave me those little cents. And that's when I learned that if you stand up for something and you really want to build, he's also remotely working, right? His boss not seeing him. You just are responsible enough to go to mm. fulfill that. Mm -hmm. So it's about building that for us. So he may be right, but then if we were to really think of putting that culture at the heart of us, we can, be, we can prove him wrong. This is the point you were talking so about. In hybrid, how do we still scale? Yeah. So I have a point, I'm saying that I don't completely agree uh, with this at all because culture is something, is your behavior when nobody is watching you, right? Um, so that doesn't mean that you have to bring the entire workforce inside the office to make them behave in a certain manner or say yeah. that uphold a certain value. That Tabak example is a very good one. That when nobody is watching, you're still doing. So how do you get that inculcated into your workforce is something what we need to think of. See, we should understand that complete work from office is, is gone. Whether we like it or not, the changing times, it is, it's no longer relevant for us in today's world. Asynchronous work is a, is a, is a way forward. Mm -hmm. And there are people who have written books on asynchronous work. And you yeah, can read yeah, about yeah. that. And how do you make your culture successful, your work successful, peop make people feel valued and also get that stickiness what uh, Soom was mentioning. Um, with asynchronous work, what kind of rituals do you have? What kind of onboarding process do you have? Uh, you know, how do you develop that? And then there are so many technologies improved so much now with so much of tools and techniques available. I think it is it is definitely possible sure. if the organization wants to do. Just this whole idea of herding everybody under one roof only then my culture is going to work is uh, not no. correct at all. One last yeah. point, whoever wants to. Yeah. Just an extension, I think, what uh, what Sarita said. Um, see, culture, at least what I've seen so far in Fractal, uh, imbibing culture is just not by talking to individuals. Imbibing culture is through what story are you telling through your decision making. Uh, I think in the previous uh, series of Unfiltered, Rohini spoke about how we kept up our offers in campus even during the difficult times for the organization. That's a decision an organization took, which told a, a lot of stories about what is our culture. You know, we wanted to share all our resources with all employees in the organization. Uh, that is a decision made by a certain set of people in the organization that talks about culture, right? Uh, we made a decision of uh, not letting off people during the COVID times, uh, come what may. That's the decision certain people took that talks about culture. Sure. So these are different stories of the organization which actually spreads the culture. Now the missing element which Biju is talking about is people coming to office and talking about those stories. That is the missing element. Now mm. that can be compensated through other ways. Uh, yeah. You know, how do you extend that story to the... This is one of those. This <laughs> is one of those, exactly. This is, those. this is one of those. So there are other ways of doing it and therefore I both agree and disagree with Biju that uh, the miss, that's the missing piece but that's not the only way of doing it. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, so like uh, he mentioned about the Starbucks example, like the person was cultured enough to change the drink. I feel that if that person was not given an in-person training, like if some if someone would have seen him and given, he saw someone doing it, that's why he stood by it. He's like, okay, if my manager is doing it, I should also do that. So I feel if you see someone, like if I see my seniors do this, I'll learn better than just someone telling me that okay, in a okay, virtual meeting, if I'm getting the same information, I might not take it up that well. But if I see my manager come to office, do the same thing, I think I'll pick it up better. And that's how I think it will spread sure, faster sure. as well. Something that will take 10 town halls for people to understand. If you just meet up in one setting, I think people will be more attentive sure, sure, and they'll sure. understand it better. So I think... I'm not saying come to office every day, but I think the hybrid thing is sure. cool that way. And I think we've mm -hmm. lived through this, right, for, for two years in COVID. Right. Nothing dropped. In fact, we came together better as an organization, right? So it actually shows that, yes, it is difficult. It's been a very, very difficult journey. Shrikant ran two town halls or three town halls at yeah. the beginning and then slowly dialed down. But, uh, but I think we kept it alive and right. together as an organization, we've we maintained it and probably got better, right, over the last two, three years. So, so maybe I don't fully agree with Biju and maybe that's another problem <laughs> that we have to throw at him, right, and say, how can you actually make it work in this situation? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I think, I think that's a wrap, uh, guys. I think we are almost there on time. Thanks a lot. What an adventure that uh, we we did a lot of uncovering of our culture. You know, every one of you spoke about it uh, in detail in your perspective. Uh, we did dissect a little bit about work from office, work from home. What's the future of work? What is hybrid work, and what are the you know pros and cons or whatever it is, right? And also, we did shine some moonlight on mental wellness, right? What is it for us from an organization perspective, and some of those points, right? And also we heard what our leaders have to say. We did a friendly rebuttal and also for for and against, right? right? So we knew how our uh, culture is evolving. So I think we should keep this spirit up. Massive shout out to all of you for coming today. I know, you know we had uh, uh, episode one and there are lots of people who have watched the episode one uh, in our YouTube and other channels. Shout out for them. Uh, would request everyone who have not watched it to watch it. And this episode will also come out very soon. So this is what makes us click as fractal and this will also help other organizations around the world. So that's the whole uh, agenda and the intention. With that, uh, I think this is Anish again, signing off uh, this episode of uh, this series, uh, promising you that the best is yet to come. <laughs> so until we meet next time, stay curious, stay you, most importantly, stay unfiltered. Thank you.